Hello and welcome back to Provost Gaming and more Democracy 3 with the new electioneering expansion, playing as France. Yep. Also, the Clones and Drones expansion and so on, other things we may not have played with before. Let's move on into year two. We haven't really had to play much with the electioneering expansion besides deciding how we're going to take this country in a liberal socialist, democratic socialist style direction. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how that works out, but we can't do any speeches or manifestos quite yet. We'll get to that in due time, I do promise. Religious symbols in schools. There is a pressure for us to introduce a law to ban the wearing of religious symbols. That would include the hijab by female Muslim students, as well as wearing a cross. Um, this is the sort of thing that I think liberals will like, and this is the sort of thing that religious will like. Well, we care more about liberals, so we are going to introduce the ban. School is, after all, a place for children to learn, not to get indoctrinated into religion. Or something along those lines, I don't know. I personally do not agree with the ban. Uh, at least within within reason, you know, obviously. Um, there's always a, there's always an extreme in the other direction. But either way, let's move on. We have 25 political capital. We're not generating a ton. Um, actually, not terrible, frankly. Uh, a couple of these guys are lacking, but it could be a lot worse. We're probably going to want to reshuffle the cabinet at least one time in this campaign. Probably in this video. We will see. All right. Um, hmm. Doctor Strike is getting worse. You're not allowed to get worse. State healthcare service, unemployment. We need to mess with the labor laws, because that is... Wow. Very pro-union, huh? Yeah, I can't do that. Sorry, we are going to have to reduce this a little bit. What if I just balance it out for now? I'm not sure how much impact this is going to end up having on the Doctor Strike. Well, I, I mean, I know from this it's going to do uh, 13%, right? But... Is that going to get rid of the Doctor Strike? Probably not. It's way too high, but we'll try. I don't want to go pro-employer, because that will mess with my socialism membership way too much. We'll see. We'll see if the labor laws reducing this makes a significant difference, and then maybe I'll increase our state health care services, and hopefully that gets rid of the Doctor Strike. We'll find out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll spend our 20 political capital doing so. That leaves us with only 5... So I guess that means we have to move on to the next turn already. Wow, that was pretty quick. Hey, another credit rating upgraded. Excellent. Now we're up to a double A GDP going up. That means we're going to get even better of a surplus. 86 billion euros now. We've gone from 50 to 86. Pretty much just from GDP growth. Not bad, guys. I'm telling you, growing the GDP and paying off that debt early on does a lot for you. 80% of the vote currently. That's pretty good. Who's more foolish, the fool or the fool who follows him? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes, wise words from a Jedi. That absolutely should play a role in our politics. Okay, 30 points to spend. <clears throat> hmm. Well, what should we do with 30 points? I don't know. Ethnic minorities. How is immigration even looking right now? It's going up. It is increasing unemployment and reducing the GDP. Right now, un immigration is high enough that it is actually doing damage to the country, not helping it. And that's the thing about immigration. Immigration actually is, generally speaking, a good thing. Right? There's a lot of talk of immigration in the United States today, uh, in part because certain candidates have decided to make it a big issue. Immigration can be good. It really can. Um, too much immigration is bad. Too little immigration is bad. And that actually does reflect in this game. So, yeah, right now they're too high. Wages are going down. GDP is being hurt. Racial tensions going up. We need to reduce our immigration a little bit. It's not a super high priority, but I'd rather deal with it now while the GDP is low rather than deal with it later when the GDP is so high that immigration just skyrockets. That would be a bit of a problem for us. Uh, to that extent, citizenship tests are actually pretty good. It doesn't cost me very much money at all, but it costs me a lot of political capital. So I guess we should do that now, early on. This will reduce racial tension because we are uh, ensuring that those few people who do immigrate into France will be able to integrate into our society effectively. And there's not going to be as much of a culture clash. Patriots like it because we're being more restrictive. However, ethnic minorities and liberals don't like it. Ultimately, this is not a very big number. It's kind of inconsequential. If you don't need immigration, if you have too much immigration, I think citizenship tests are pretty much always going to be better for you than worse. So we are definitely going to grab that. Unfortunately, that costs us all of our political capital, so already we are moving on into the next turn. Things are going pretty fast this video. Market meltdown. Crap. That really sucks. 
We may not have done anything wrong, but a crisis in confidence in the overseas mortgage market has led to a global meltdown. That would be a little hit of the U.S. right there. I think the global economy just plummets. Capitalists are very unhappy. Because the market has had some issues, right, socialists are saying, hey, this is why we need to have more regulations in our economy, in our, in our financial sector, and therefore they gain more members. So overall, that's going to be good for us as far as our votes, but... That really hurts. That hits the GDP pretty hard. Right now, we have a 100 billion euro surplus, which is amazing, but I don't expect to hold on to this for very long. It's probably going to go down to, like, I don't know, 50 or something like that later. Next turn. We'll find out. All right. 30 political capital to use. Again, uh, what should I go for? Debt has gone down to 450 billion euros. That's not too bad. We need to improve our technology, our education, our productivity. I'd love to get rid of the uncompetitive economy, especially now when the global economy is having so much problems. We need to be competitive if we want to survive. So that's going to be important. What about, um, gee, what, I don't know. What is this? Child benefit. What if, um, maternity leave? What if I gave out a welfare program like child care provision? Yeah, that's going to cost us a fair chunk of money. It's expensive. However, this is going to increase our productivity pretty significantly, and we do need that if we want to get rid of the uncompetitive economy event. Parents like it because, hey, guess what? The state is now providing for your child care. Cool. Productivity is going to go up by almost exactly 9%. Pretty good. More people become parents and they like me. Unemployment goes way, way down. That's great because unemployment is too high in France right now. So reducing it by 11% has some pretty obvious benefits for us. Also, by the way, reducing unemployment does have an impact on the doctor's strike, I believe. Compassionate also goes up. Yeah, let's take a quick look at that. Doctor's strike. Low unemployment. The lower it is the lower the doctor strike. So yeah. Wow, that was um that was not as much of an impact from the labor laws as I was hoping for, honestly. Uh ooh. Hmm. We may have to increase our state healthcare services and I would hate to have to revisit the labor laws and make it even more pro employer, but we may not have a choice. I'm really hoping that if we can deal with unemployment and we can increase funding, this will go away on its own. But I'm not feeling very confident about that right now. Not confident at all. Okay, well, in the meantime, let's improve our technology and our education. Uh, technology colleges seems like a pretty decent way to do this. Now, unfortunately, this does reduce our equality. But equality, we already have the egalitarian society, so what do I need more equality for? It's not a big deal. We have plenty of it because of all our welfare programs. Socialists won't like it. Sorry, guys, you'll have to live. Education and technology going up is good for productivity and just general well sense of being in France. This also will increase our industrial automation a little bit because you have to pay attention to that now that we have the clones and drones expansion on. Something to consider. But I'm not too worried. It's going to cost us 2.27 billion euros per quarter for now. I think we can handle it. Um, we have four points left. I guess we could do some things to kind of try to reduce car usage to try and improve the, um, improve the environment. Uh, telecommuting initiative actually does have some pretty nice perks to it. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. That will make commuters very happy, even though less people are commuting. Car usage goes way down, which is good for CO2 and good for the environment. Parents like it. Trade units like it. Across the board, not a bad thing. 1.62 billion. No reason not to have that maxed out, because we do not have money problems. While we're at it, we should go ahead and do the carpooling campaign. That again, will just straight up reduce car usage. Which is not a bad thing across the board, if I look at it. Let's see. The more people drive cars, the more money we get out of petrol tax and toll roads, but the environment goes down. Uh, CO2 emissions, oil demand, traffic congestion, which actually does have a direct impact on the GDP. Also CO2 emissions and blah, 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 blah. Basically, everything's freaking interconnected in this game in so many ways. Wow, that does suck. But yeah, I think doing the telecommuting initiative is going to help a little bit. We can also see that uh, basically the lower the... GDP is the lower some of these things cost, which is good. Eh, not so bad. All right, well, we're out of points, though. Let's go ahead and move on into turn four. If we're running out of points, this... Oh, wow. We already got to a triple A? Jeez, that was quick. Nice. Yeah, what did I say? The budget went down to about uh, 45 billion instead of 50. I was close. I was close in my guess. I know what I'm talking about. Unemployment, unfortunately, is still really bad, but a big part of that is because the economy crashed. So if we can get this back on its feet, and it is trickling up, 
we'll be in better shape. And the credit rating is definitely going to help. So, okay. Health is improving slightly, but I would like it to get even better. Yeah, if we're having this many um, political capital issues, I think it is time to just reshuffle the, uh, the cabinet. Um, yeah, some of these guys are just not producing much for us. We only have really two very effective ministers, so... Okay, reshuffle the cabinet. Let's begin. I say this every time. If this is the first time you've ever seen this channel in one of my Democracy 3 playthroughs, first off, I highly recommend you check out some of my other ones. But secondly, I'll just go ahead and say the one thing that everyone messes up... I don't know about everyone. I like to think I've made some impact on the Democracy 3 community, but a lot of people mess up, including a lot of big YouTubers is they do not pay attention to the sympathies. Everyone focuses on this number right here, and they think, oh good, I'll just get the 4.9 person, get more power, and she'll stay that good forever. Well, only if you make trade unionists and uh, spe uh, socialists happy. By the way, there's another thing that these guys are good at, and it's campaigning. I don't exactly know how that really works for us. I'm assuming that the better the campaigners, and the more they like you, the better your vote turnout, like activists. Pretty sure that's how it works, but that is something new to consider when you pick your ministers. Personally, I'm not too worried about it. Because I think by the time we get to our election, because we have a total of five years, I'm pretty sure we're going to make France so gosh darn strong that people will vote for me regardless of how good these guys are at campaigning. So I'm just going to pick the best people I can find instead. And for now, we need to start with foreign policy. Uh, how about Laura Mercier? I got again. I don't. I, I don't speak any French. Four point nine is actually pretty good from the get go. But farmers and parents like this. Those are two groups that we can definitely make happy. Yeah, sure. Okay, pretty easy to make farmers happy. We'll go ahead and hire her. Uh, for welfare, we are going to hire. Well, absolutely, Jennifer Clement. Uh, trade unionist and socialist. We can make them happy easily enough. Economy. Um. Do, do, do. Religious capitalists, no. We will not be making them happy. Ethnic minorities and conservatives. Minorities, maybe, but conservatives, not as much. Don't know if I want to rely on them. Uh, Self-employed religious, no. Um, Benjamin, religious capitalist, no. You're not even economic. Why am I... Why, I'm getting confused. Okay, never mind. Uh, oh, here's something. Economy, liberal parents, and already set to five. He's one of my good guys. We'll go ahead and pick him up. Tax. Let's see. Deborah, Emma Roy, farmers and environmentalists. That's pretty good. We can make both of them happy easily enough. We're already committed to making the farmers happy for Laura. So yeah, sure. Okay. She's pretty good. Public services. Mm-hmm. Religious capitalists. No. Self-employed religious. No. Religious conservatives. Lots of religious. No, we're not doing that. Um... Mm-hmm. I'm not seeing a lot of good ones here. Retired trade unionist. Maybe. Trade unionist, yes. We can make them happy. Retired? We already cut their pensions rather significantly, but... You know, there are a couple things we can do that will make the retired pretty happy. Yeah, okay. You know what? We're going to go ahead and hire Xavier. For law and order. Conservative patriot. No. Uh, Parents and Patriot, no. Law and Order. We don't have a lot of Law and Order people left. Trade Unionist Patriot. Um, Patriot? Maybe. Socialist Trade Unionist. Oh, wait, no, this is a lot better. Yeah, 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 okay. Socialist Trade Unionist it is, even if he doesn't produce as many points from the start. Transport. No. 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 Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We don't have very many options here. Crap. Yeah, this can happen if you don't plan it all ahead of time. Um... Ooh, there's no good transport ministers. We could hire somebody who doesn't want to be in this particular job, but that generally doesn't work out well for you. I'm looking at you and wondering. Conservatives? Farmers. Now, we are going for a liberal playthrough. Here's the thing. Conservatives are a lot easier to make happy than liberals. Right? All you have to do is just really crack down on, uh, on crime, and conservatives typically will be pretty happy with you. Farmers were already going to make very happy. You know what? We're going to go for it. Okay. Not so bad. So it looks like we actually have more women than men in our cabinet, so take that, Justin Trudeau. 
Prime Minister of Canada, who thought he was so cool having half of his cabinet be women. Thought you were so cool, didn't you? Well, I beat you. France wins. France always wins, except for World War II. Don't pay attention to that. Although we did eventually win that too, so what am I talking about? Okay, the thing that I was thinking about as far as making the retired happy is the winter fuel subsidy. A special concession given to the elderly. There you go. Regular welfare payment made to everyone over retirement age toward the cost of their winter fuel bills reduce fuel poverty, quote unquote. So yeah, basically we're making sure that none of the old people get left out in the cold, quite literally. It's not going to cost us a lot of money. I think it actually makes environmentalists unhappy. Yeah, unfortunately it does. But the retired will be thrilled. This will offset all the damage we did by cutting their pensions. <laughs> Which I just think is ridiculous. Hey guys, we're taking away all your retirement checks and all your social security. None of that. But here's a piddly amount of money to pay for a few logs on the fire. Have fun. You love me, right? Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit derogatory to the retired. Anyway, health also does go up by 3.5, which is pretty good for 1.23 billion. Compassionate goes up. Energy efficiency unfortunately goes down, but we'll find ways to counteract that. I'm not too worried. And that should ensure, I think, that Xavier is more likely to uh, get me more political capital. So in the long run, I think it's going to be worth it. Uh, other people we can talk to. We want to make farmers happy, right? Yeah, let's do city farms. These are really good. 367 million euros is not a big deal to just basically make them happy. And also increase their membership, which, you know, not so bad. Not so bad. It could be worse. We only have three political capital left, though. Um, no, I don't want to do that. No. Free parenting classes. You know what? It's good to make parents like us. I'm pretty sure that's an important voter demographic as well, right? We had, um, we had two ministers that like parents. So yeah, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing, spend some money just to make them like us. 7.44% for 800 million, not a big deal. And that also should improve our political capital generation with... This guy's already at five, but he can get a little bit more. And also, wait, oh yes, Laura. Yes, so both of these guys will get a little bit stronger as a result. Unfortunately though, we are out of political capital and we are out of time. So, pretty tumultuous year two. We had that global market meltdown, but we have a pretty strong surplus thanks to our, you know, default 56% tax rate. <laughs> Ridiculous. We're paying off the debt. We're looking pretty good right now. The economy is chugging along, and I think we're going to be able to start making some progress on some of these things. Pollution is going down. Uncompetitive economy very slowly ticking down. We may want to focus on getting a technological advantage so we can get a huge production boost and that should help to get rid of this. That would be one way to spend our money. Obesity is slowly ticking down. Asthma epidemic is going down. Doctor Strike is sort of leveling out. Yeah, the labor laws did not have much impact. Ouch. Okay. Not so good. We'll find a way to deal with that next time. Thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If so, then hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I, as always, will see you guys next time. Bye.